your life will be hard. You do what is easy. Complain about your situation, your circumstances. Surrender and give up on your dreams. Become depressed and bitter and angry. Anybody can do that. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, keep coming back again and again and again. Get up dressed every day. Take life on. Taking life by the collar. You say yes. I can do it. I can do this. And you've said to yourself, I'm willing to face the nose. I'm willing for people to laugh at me. I'm willing to gut this out. I'm willing to make this happen. It's my time. It's possible. It's necessary. It's hard. It's worth it. I'm going to do whatever it takes. I can do it. If anybody's ever done it at any point in time in history, then what's possible for one, it's possible for me. And I'm going to do it. And if you do that over and over... Hey, this is your boy Muhammad. In this video, I'm going to talk about my career story and how I became a U.S. resident. So if you want to hear more about my story, stick around. You're going to watch the whole video because the butter is going to come in the end. Now, I'm a U.S. resident, I'm a green card holder, I'm an Avant healthcare professional, I work as an oncology triage nurse in one of the top 100 leading hospitals in the country. This whole story started when I finished high school. I didn't know what major to get into, I had no idea about nursing, and I had no idea about the healthcare system. But my uncle, God bless him, he advised me to get into nursing school. <laughs> And I graduated back in 2007 with a bachelor degree in nursing. That was in the Lebanese University Faculty of Public Health, Section 5, in Saida, Lebanon. And when I graduated, I started working in Hamoud Hospital University Medical Center. And that was back in 2007. I worked there for like three years. It has been amazing, but I didn't know anything about nursing then. I mean, I picked up very good practice. I had a critical eye, good skills, but still, I had nothing to do with nursing, nursing care, quality indicators, policies and procedure, so none of that. And what I did is in Hamoud Hospital University Medical Center, I figured that I want I want more. I want more I want more I wanted to immigrate. So I started looking everywhere, asking people, surfing the internet. Um, looking for answers like how can I immigrate to the United States? The only guy who was helping people to immigrate to the United States has a company called International Nursing Network. I paid him a visit. I mean, he's a humble man. He spent like two hours with me, explaining to me about the United States, um, the process of being a registered nurse in the United States, the exams I have to go through, the CGFNS certificate exam, the English exam, and you know, all that good stuff. So instantly, he touched my heart. I knew where I want to be. I knew how to get there. It was just about putting down the effort. David? Yeah, I gotta call you right back. Hey! What? Go, go. We started working on our CGFNS certificate. So he booked me for the test. And he gave me all the textbooks and the references that I should study with. And then that's where my journey started. And I started studying and studying. It was like a whole new world for me. We didn't study this back at university. I mean, it's a different mentality in the United States than it's back home. And with what I'm experiencing, you know, in the, in the hospital I work at, it's so much different. So I said, I mean, I'll give it a try. And by the time I was studying for my CGFNS exam, I switched jobs. So I went to uh, the American University of Beirut Medical Center and this is a big hospital back back in Lebanon it's a magnet facility and you know when applying for this hospital it's different from other you know other hospitals in Lebanon so you have to do an English test and my god I sucked in English so I had to study for my English exam I did my English test over there and then I did my nursing test I passed that and then I got the job I used to work in intensive critical care at the um, AUBMC they gave me a position in pediatric oncology and I said like what? Pediatric oncology? Like I know nothing about 
speeds and hell I don't know nothing about oncology so what should I do I mean should I accept the job it is a prestigious job to work in the AUBMC but I mean it's a better pay it's better reputation as a nurse back in Lebanon but do I want to work in pediatric oncology and that was a life-changing moment in my career I took the job I started working there in Pete's Oncology Unit and that's the uh, Children Cancer Center of Lebanon. It's in the AUBMC and it's affiliated with the St. Jude Research Hospital back in Memphis and it was the best job ever. Pediatric Oncology is amazing. I, I love working with kids, I love working with oncology patients, I love this long-term relationship with the patients and you know people think in pediatric oncology like kids are dying and you know it's all tears it's a depressing unit but you know it's the whole way around like working with pediatric oncology it's so much fun pediatric patients are smiling all the time you're playing on your shift all the time you can see celebrities like every weekend so at the AUBMC I mean I started learning nursing um, councils quality indicators uh, specialty certifications so I started learning more about higher standards of practice so by the end of 2010 I got married I was still working on my CGFNS exam and studying I initially applied in 2008 and the first time I did my CGFNS certificate exam was 2011 and you during that time I kept uh, postponing it for several reasons but then I got married and my wife was working in Saudi Arabia and Riyadh King Faisal Specialist Hospital and Research Center. So she was working over there and I was working in the AUBMC. Uh, she took my CV and gave it to a friend. I mean, forever, I'll be grateful to that guy. His name is Halim. So uh, he was a nurse manager at that time of the intensive care unit. So he took my application. Uh, he gave it to the right people and because I had an oncology background I was assigned in a pediatric oncology unit which is the B3 in King Faisal and I moved there on February 2011 my wife had a vacation earlier in 2010 and she went to Australia and when I told her about my plans for the future that I'm applying for immigration to the United States and I'm studying my exam then she said No, 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 we're not doing that. If you want to immigrate, then we're immigrating to Australia. And she started showing me all these pictures. I mean, Australia, yeah, it's nice, it's fun, it's everything. But, I mean, do I want to go there? And that was the detour. Beware of vision, dream, and passion killers. Family and friends, in most cases, sad to even say this family and friends in most cases will be the first to try and talk you out of something that you're passionate excited about and that you have a vision for most of the people that have no dreams will wake up every day trying to talk you out of your dreams they have no goals they have nothing that they're ambitious about so I was still booked for my CGFNS exam so I wasn't that serious about it at that time anymore because we were planning to immigrate to Australia. So still, I did my CGFNS exam after a night shift. And I went to the testing center, I did the exam, I was tired, I didn't do much, and I failed. I think I got to 390 on the exam. And I mean, I, I didn't care a lot because we already started our immigration process to Australia. <laughs> 